And I'm going to go over today promises and async operations for really new developers. I've talked to a lot of people who do not understand what asynchronous um, development is and what promises are and how they actually work. So I'm going to try and distill it down to something really, really simple. Because uh, at its core, it's really actually very simple. But it's also a very fundamental piece of writing stable code. Um, so here we go. So if you've got a function like this, um, that's just called return a number and we create a variable called number and don't set it to anything and then we set it to two and then we return it you can expect that once you log it out to the console that that number is going to be two but the problem is is that oftentimes a function is going to do the same kind of thing where you're setting a variable to some data but there's a delay right here like in order to go get this number, it's from some network or an AJAX request or something that creates a delay. So if you have something that creates a, a delay, whether it's a network request or a timeout, so let's say we have a timeout. And I'm going to use some pseudocode because you know the idea here is that there's a timeout of some duration. Let's just say it's 10 seconds. And we take this and put it in here. Okay. Well, if you were to run this now, the result of this method to log will be null because it'll execute this line. Then it will execute this line, start the counter, then it will return number, which is still null at this point. And there you go. But what happens when you need this function to actually return this data because this is a network operation or something else that's real that's like you can't avoid the delay and so you still have to get a valid number out of this so once this gets set no matter how much time passes when this gets set then do this and that's what promises are and so what you're gonna do is up here at the top you're going to create a defer or you're gonna create a, a deferred object you know, you can call it whatever you want. You can spell it however you want. But it's going to equal a new deferred. Uh, and uh, when it, how you do this, depending on the library, if you're using jQuery, then um, you know, you're going to use jQuery's deferred. Um, if you're using Angular, you'll use the Q service. But they all work the same way, where you're going to create a new deferred object and then instead of returning what you actually want, um, you're going to uh, return the deferred object itself, but specifically the promise on that deferred object, um, which in and of itself is an object. But that object has a method on it that's very useful. So that's what's going to happen. So now at this point, if you were to run this, what you would get is a promise object out of this. But that promise object actually has a method on it. So what you can do is you can say then. And whatever you pass in here, like a function, if I spelled it right, is going to get run whenever this promise gets resolved. You could say, well, when does it get resolved? Well, you tell it. So like right here, you're going to say deferred object dot resolve. Now, what this means is that if you then put the console log inside of here, this is only going to run once that fires and at this point number is two now the question is what do you log in here well the way what you log in here could be anything you, know, you could just go off and do something else but if you're specifically wanting access to that you can pass in something here like number this is that and so to get access to that you can come here and say number you call this anything you want, but whatever you call it is going to be accessible. So you can then say that. And that is all there is to deferreds. 
So what will happen is a deferred object will get created, a number variable will get created that's set to nothing, a timeout will start, and then it will immediately return the deferred object's promise. Uh, then that return a number is a now promise object which has a then method that you can then pass in something and then you can call resolve on that deferred pass in any data you want it could be even an object or function it could be anything uh, which then gets accessible here and then you can do something with it so if this were go off onto some server and fetch some data and then you did a bunch of stuff and then you went off and did some sort of XHR or Ajax request here um, and then whenever that gets done you can then resolve it pass in the data and then you get access to do something like this and you know for certain that this code will only execute after this gets called which at this point you know that this is already successful and it's already executed whatever it needed to do um, and that in a nutshell is a promise now you can also queue up multiple promises so let's say that this was to go off to Twitter and get some data and then you had another function that was go off to Facebook and get some data and then once both were successful then you go and do something well what you can do is you can actually group them so you can say something like uh, if it were angular uh, there's a, a service but you basically say all and then do then and so in here you would pass in an array of uh, deferred objects so like this would be one you know or I should say array of promises and so this is saying you know run that returns a promise and then you can pass in here another promise and another promise etc now what the actual word here in the syntax if it were angular you'd be using Q I forget what it is in jQuery but uh, so you would do something like that but there's there's gonna be some method uh, that you can use off of whatever you know uh, promise library you're using that will have a, an all to it and uh, then you can pass in multiple promises and then do something and it's the same way you put your function in there and it gets passed and what it gets passed is um, uh, another array that's the result of all of the individual um, uh, promise so you would have an, uh, the function that you put in here like this the the thing right here you can just call it uh, data uh, that this would be an array so you could access data zero would be from the first uh, result and then data one etc would be the second so um, that is how you would access individual um, values from multiple functions that all have a um, they're all returning a promise so uh, but that's how you would queue them up but you know, there you go. So you have this then method, sorry, and uh, you know, you just have your, you make your deferred object, return the promise, call the then method on that promise, and then you can, uh, whenever you call resolve on the object itself, that's when that then function gets fired. Um, now you have a couple other things too. You can also call um, reject on here um, and you've got some other things that you can do with that to, to handle conditions but that is effectively uh, what promises are good luck to you all